Hi DIYers, Sterling with Alarm Grid here. Today we're going to show you how to program a Honeywell 5834-4 4 button wireless key fob. This is a keychain remote that we can use to one touch arm or disarm our Lynx Touch L5200 security system. This 5834-4 is included in any of the wireless security system kits that we offer on our website. It's also commonly sold from any alarm company uh, when you purchase one of these units. And again, all it allows is a one-touch arm disarm without having to do a complicated code at the, at the screen or having to remember the code. Um, so it's a nice handy way to arm and disarm. Um, in a more friendly way. You, you go outside, you close your door, you're in your driveway walking to your car, you arm your system, same idea, you're pulling into your driveway before you open your door, your garage door, you disarm the system and you have that functionality from the fob. It's important that we don't lose this device because now if someone gets their hands on this they have a way to disarm and arm our system without needing our code and obviously that's a big security risk. What, we'll, what we mentioned or, or what we like to remind people is that if you're worried about that and you're worried, well, I'm forgetful or I misplace things all the time, I don't want to use a fob, just keep in mind if you ever do lose it, it's very easy to delete the programming and therefore you know that if this gets into the wrong hands, they would no longer have an option to arm because as soon as this is deleted, then the device is not going to do anything when you press the button. So we're going to show you how to program this device. We go into here. From the home screen, we hit security, more, and tools. We type in our installer code 4112, and we're at the program screen. When we hit program, we're now in system programming. And on the fob, even though every button is a zone, so this arm away button or the lock icon, that's a zone. The unlock or the disarm is a zone. The person in the home, which is arm stay, that's a zone. And then this asterisk button, which by default is set to nothing, but could be set as a panic, or could be used to activate a garage door controller, or could be used to activate a automation scene or rule. This is also a zone. So this device would actually be required to be programmed with at least, well, up to four, the four available buttons, each one with a different zone. You could do it through zones, but it's a lot more confusing. The easiest way to program a key fob is to use the keys section of programming. Once you go into keys, you have the option for edit or delete. Because we have no keys yet, those are grayed out. So what we want to do is add new, and we have our template key fob page ready to enroll the device. Just like with any wireless sensor, the first thing we want to do is enroll the serial number. On a key fob, you don't even have to open it up. The serial number is displayed on the sticker right on the back. You might want to peel this sticker off and leave it somewhere safe in case you ever need to get the serial number later. Um, over time, this can get uh, you know weathered and, and you may lose this number. But if you click into serial number, we can enroll the device by activating the sensor three times. You also could type in the serial number if you wanted. But here we go. So we're going to activate it by pressing and holding the button. That's one activation. We need to do three. So number two. Number two enrolls the serial number and the loop number. The loop number is kind of hidden on this device and it's not really something you need to know because as you do the keys programming it automatically enrolls all four, bu all four buttons. Um, but technically this button is loop number three this button is loop number two, this button is loop number four, and this button is loop number one. So if we had pressed this button to activate it, and you can choose any button you want, doesn't matter, it would have given it a different loop number. But as long as we press the same button on the third time, we now have it learned in. It's a four button key fob. The serial number matches the number on the sticker. It, can, it shows that we're starting with zone 140 and zone Button number one is 140, arm away, which is the lock. Zone 141 is the disarm, which is the unlock. Zone 142 is the arm stay, which is the picture of the guy in the home. That means motions are off and the perimeter contacts are, are live. And then finally, button number four, out of the box is set no response. That means pressing this button would do nothing. 
In our case, we want to give the option to press that button and set off an audible alarm as a panic alarm. That way, if we're in the home, middle of the night, we hear someone outside our house banging on a window, or we hear something downstairs that we're worried about, we want to scare someone away, we make it 24 hour audible. 24 hours means that this button will work if the system is armed or disarmed, it doesn't matter. In both modes, pressing this button will activate the audible panic. So before we click save to lock in our settings, you'll notice we have one more empty box that we have to address. Very important with a key fob that we map the fob to a specific user code in the panel. So highlighting the user button shows us all of the available users for the panel. We're not using any of these sub-user codes, but by default, the master code of 1234 is set, and ev every fob needs to be assigned to a valid user. So we select master. If we don't have a user, the arming disarming commands don't work because it doesn't know what code to associate with the particular arm or disarm. Once we set it to master, we can save it, exit to the home screen, and arming this fob will tell the system or, or the system will respond the same way as if we were to type in our code one, two, three, four. So we can show you that it's working now that it's enrolled. If we press and hold the button, you'll see this LED light up green and flash and you'll hear the panel arm. So here we go. Armed away. Exit now. It's beeping at us to alert us that we have to exit the home. And if we disarm with this unlock button, Goes back, chime. goes back to ready to arm, chime, and the panel's uh, ready to arm again. We can show you the arm stay button works as well. Armed stay, exit now. In the stay mode, they're still giving you an exit delay in case some members of the family are gonna exit the home and some members of the family are gonna stay in the home. So that's an important designation. Some people assume that arm stay puts it into full alarm mode right away. It doesn't. You still have your exit delay. However, you'll notice it's not beeping at us to warn us to get out because they know that some people might still be in the home and therefore it would be annoying to have it beeping for the full 60 seconds. We can go ahead and disarm. Disarmed, ready to arm. And we're back, and we're back to ready to arm and, and system normal. We're gonna show you the panic activation. It's gonna get very loud, but pressing and holding this button is gonna activate the panic alarm. As soon as I hear the siren, I'll disarm it for you so that we can just show you the buttons working and without having to hear that siren for too long. So here we go. We're gonna press and hold. Have our alarm. Disarmed, not ready to arm. Check zone. One, two, three, four on this panel, disarm that panic alarm, and you'll notice after the disarm which silenced the siren, the panel will still show alarm 143 for button. That gives you a nice indication that it was the fob that activated the device. You could disarm again from the panel, or you could disarm. Disarmed, ready to arm, chime. From the key fob, and the panel's back, ready to arm, ready to go. So that is how you program a 5834-4 wireless key fob to a Lynx Touch L5200 wireless security system. Please make sure to subscribe to our channel and if you have any questions on programming a 5834-4 or using your Lynx Touch L5200 system, feel free to email us support at alarmgrid.com.